Today is a day that I've been excited about for months because we have a guest who epitomizes the things that I believe are most important about great leadership, about coaching, about teaching. Uh, he's a legend. He really doesn't need an introduction. We have with us today Coach Mike Krzyzewski, Coach K of Duke University. Let me just give you a few of his accomplishments because it would take a, a full day to go through all of them. Uh, he's inducted, inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. He's won three national championships at Duke University, brought his teams to ten Final Fours. He was selected as America's best coach. Now, that's from all sports and all levels by Time and CNN. And I thought it very appropriate that he was also selected uh, as uh, the John Wooden Award for Legends of Coaching in the year 2000. Coach Wooden is a good friend of mine. And I think the best way that I can, with all these accomplishments, the best thing I can say about Coach K is this. He's a better father, better husband, better human being than he is a coach. You can judge the quality of people by the way they treat those who do nothing for them. And Coach Mike Krzyzewski, Coach K of Duke University, epitomizes that from ego to we go kind of philosophy. Coach, it's a, a privilege and an honor and a joy to have you on the show. Well, thanks, Brian. It, I, uh, it's an honor to be with you, and uh, you do such a good job of bringing you know, information to your listeners and uh, you know, about how to help themselves, how to be better leaders, how to uh, make their lives better. And hopefully during the show today, we can touch on some subjects that will help all of us. Excellent. And I wanted to start, this is such an ex- a fantastic time to be interviewing right now, because I know this is a time of year that you get excited about, because it's, mm-hmm. it's right at that time, that incredibly exciting time, as you begin uh, your, the building process for your new team, you welcome them. Uh, in business, that may be analogous to the close of one fiscal year and the beginning of another, or the beginning of a campaign. So I thought I'd start by just asking, what are the most important principles and actions uh, to you at this time of sort of new beginning? Well, for me, I I try to uh, separate myself from the past, and I use the concept that I call next play. I do that every day of my life, but especially as you start a uh, start a new team. Uh, I mean, I'm always busy, but I don't always coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least, not always coach basketball. And so, I have a new group, and it's incumbent on me to uh, have a clear book to start a new book with this team and you know, I'll bring my experiences of the past but I don't want to bring all the successes and rely on them I, I try to be as hungry as I am as I was when I first started coaching but have all the experiences and you know the maturity that I have now to go along with it and and, and as a result I get enthusiastic and I try not I try to learn about my team and who they are now. Even the guys who I had coached last year, people change, and especially young people change um, as they're growing uh, during the, their college years. And I want to make sure I'm coaching one of our players, J.J. Redick, and who's an outstanding player. He's a different player right now as a senior than he was at the end of last year as a junior. And he has different goals. I want to... Uh, I want to find out what those goals are and how to uh, inter interact with uh, you know what we're doing as a group and, we're, and trying to accomplish and hopefully he can accomplish his individual stuff along with it and so I do a lot of meetings with my team right now and it gets me excited. That's so great, you know. Incidentally, since you brought up JJ Reddick, I had to put this in. My daughter Jenna, who's in the eighth grade, says, "Coach, you're invited to our house for dinner at Asheville." And you have to bring JJ with you. She right, I knew that there was that, a there was a uh, the fine print was that JJ had to come. That yeah, that was very uh, fine print for sure. I, you know, get, I, I get I get invited to a lot of things where if my players <laughs> are are involved. You know, then I'm I'm okay. If I, alone, uh, there's some question about. There you go. <laughs> you know, your players over the years it kind of tacks on to what you were just talking about uh, Grant Hill, for example. But many of your players have noted with, I think, some great respect that you've never coached two teams the same, that each team is different. In fact, each person is different. I've often believed in my background in coaching that the worst thing you can do is coach everybody the same because mm-hmm. everybody's not the same. Uh, could you kind of expand on that, that, uh, that process of, of coaching differently and that, that basic philosophy? Well, it's not an assembly line. You know, you know every person on earth is different in you know, that's the way God made us, and uh, uh, and and you change. You know who you were. If you're in business, somebody who is 
45, when they're 50, they're different. When they're 46, they're different. And, you know, you, you have to uh, look at that as something exciting. And, one, look at it. A lot of people say, well, just do your job, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, you, know you, should be the, you should be the same. Well, it doesn't work that way. I have three kids now. When I started this job, I had no kids. You know, or my kid is starting college, you know, there's an expense or, you know, my wife is sick right now. And, you know, so it's called empathy, uh, Brian, you know, like I think when a a leader has empathy and learns about his or her people, the, the people that they're given the privilege to lead will follow you better as a result of you treating them as a human being, treating them with respect And, uh, you know, that's what I I try to do all the time with with my players. And and, and then when we have an off, you know, like when we're putting a system of offense or defense in, I never try to categorize my players as you're a point guard, you're the two guard, you're the three or whatever it is. Rather, when you're on the court, here's what you do. Mm -hmm. And, And so every time you go out on the court, all you have to do is be you and be you very enthusiastically and competitively. And I'll figure out how I mesh you in with other people who are trying to be themselves. And, and uh, in other words, when you come in, who subs for J.J. Redick? When they come in, are they, do you expect them to be J.J. Redick? Or did, you know, do they think that they have to be that? You know, and, uh, just be yourself. And I, that can happen in business, too. You, you know, someone... You know, comes in on a different shift uh, in your business, or you get somebody new. Don't try to make them somebody else. They'll they'll never be that way. Teach them the skills. Teach them the fundamental principles of the of the job. But uh, you know, also give them an opportunity to show their personalities in it. And I think you'll you'll have somebody much more vested in in what's going on than they would normally be.